All right. So welcome to ISMS. Uh, there are first a uh, few uh, uh, basic stuff to discuss. Uh, now, there are, there, there are some people here, almost 30 plus students uh, who are new to the program. So welcome all of you for the cybersecurity master's program. Uh, I think all of you had the morning lecture with Kavinga sir. So, but anyway, I, I'm in uh, responsibility to explain a bit more about this degree and where we are heading. So as you are well aware, we have discussed a few times. Uh, so the whole objective is to uh, uh, gear you towards understanding cybersecurity and become experts, right? So please remember the word being experts and uh, being world-class, right? So otherwise there's no point at all. So make sure that uh, you find your niche uh, when you're studying uh, during this program, find your niche because cybersecurity is also quite large. There's so many different uh, aspects into cybersecurity. Uh, so find your niche and try to be world-class on that. So to give some examples, you can work on blockchain, uh, which is not only cybersecurity, but uh, that's, uh, that's a huge uh, value for cyber, uh, blockchain people. So you guys can work on that, right? And you can become expert. Uh, and then of course, development security, software security is another area, uh, which is very demanding. You can work on that and become a world-class expert. Or you can uh, work on web security, bug bounty, you know, all these things. Or you can become a reverse engineer and you can become a specialist. Or you can become a GRC specialist, uh, which is partly the area that I'm covering in this module, governance, risk and compliance. And many more, right? Many more, right? Uh, and you can become a forensics expert. You can become a cyber criminal investigator where you can work for uh, like police, army, defense, wherever, whatever. So there's a huge, uh, you know, discipline where we are working with uh, cybersecurity. But I think you should clearly think, uh, deeply think that you want to become expert in one of those areas or to max, right? Not everywhere or not every other. It'll be very hard because uh, it's not the thing, right? The game here is to uh, work on one and be uh, expertise. Because always, uh, for generalists also, there is a lot of value outside. Not a problem, but uh, specialists, they have their own unique uh, uh, areas to uh, work and to uh, earn the bucks, right? So, so we'll talk too much, like more about these things later on, but rather initially, I think we have to understand uh, where we are heading, right? And of course there are second sem students as well. Uh, almost, I think uh, collectively we might have 60 plus, nearly 70 students in this classroom. So that's a lot to handle at the master's level uh, because for me it's too much trouble because i had to mark papers doing all this crazy stuff so it's not that easy i need your help uh, a lot in that sense and then uh, the normal uh, things we have to discuss about communication now i already created a whatsapp group you all can register there i know this is too much hassle because now we have a group for your badge which is 2021 most of you is msc 2021 july badge intake and that's uh, 2021 Jan intake. And of course you have separate, maybe like different uh, lecturers will create the, their own uh, things. So, but what I'm trying to do, at least for cybersecurity, I'm asking all the lecturers throughout for your badges to create a one Slack group or the Slack team. There you'll have different rooms. So I think that will be easier. So because it's too much of hassle to have several WhatsApp group popping up notifications. But uh, if you have a Slack, go there once, go through click, 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 very easily you can get it done. And of course, there are so many things that we can share on Slack, which you can't share on WhatsApp. That's very rich and powerful. So we'll try, try our best, but uh, we'll have the WhatsApp groups also in case, right? For quicker, you know, uh, interactions, right? So, and of course you can have your own group, it doesn't matter. So you can uh, have a hidden group without lecturers in it, it's up to you. Right? So anyway, I say that, you know, if I say don't know, you will have it, you know? so that's okay. Right, uh, yeah, that's uh, basic uh, stuff. What else? Uh, and also CoSeb. So all the details within the day I will share. Now we have the CoSeb set up. I'll have to add anything. I haven't added anything yet, but this recording I will add and then I'll share the enrollment key for SMS. And of course, for some of you have ALSS uh, for the SEM1 students. After this lecture, I will be at 12.30. And then for the SEM2 students, you'll have RM in the morning 
tomorrow morning as i can remember uh, yeah uh, and uh, you'll have computer forensics uh, and some of you uh, principles of cyber security same one students you actually have uh, principles of cyber security and then you'll have uh, computer forensics both done by mr amila and for the second sem students you will have research methods in the morning uh, done by professor chandimal who's our dean and also professor uh, uh, sanat i remember his last name from moratu both are profs and then you'll have your a normal cyber forensics session guys be be very careful on the research methods so it's the dean no so <laughs> he's really concerned about your discipline and stuff like that so please make sure that you not that it doesn't uh, belongs to a comes to these other subjects uh, same same but uh, be very careful on rm to do things on time right okay so uh, and for the lss you'll get the basic idea today it's only like for seven weeks but uh, i'll tell you one thing we have identified the patterns uh, throughout the last few years no a lot of students do fail lss right simple reason maybe they don't really care about the subject uh, so please be concern that you are go to all the lectures and do all whatever the activities you are supposed to do right so don't miss it right so please make sure that you attend to the lectures in case if you miss i think you will get the recordings but be in the groups talk to your friends right this is something that is missing now because you are not physically there so you just keep it like when when you you have like a phone in your bed next to you maybe sleeping maybe you are in the washroom or a tab back at you know balna right maybe you are washing your clothes so you're not very serious at times advantage is you can do whatever you want to do or you can eat drink be in the washroom and whatever you are doing with somebody else that's okay but make sure that you are serious on the content as well right and talk let's get out kohmar let's get in on you guys right so be careful on that matter but get the advantage do sometimes that's okay do exercise and listen to the lecture that's okay so you are doing dual you know you have the duality principle so so get the full advantage at the same time make sure that you are uh, be serious on the content as well Uh, because always keep that the goal like you have to be expert on something otherwise the spending money useless right okay but if you really work with these subjects it matters lot than like sometimes maybe you know if you spending like millions in a, a foreign university for cyber security you don't need to do that right so our program is also good because we are copying other programs right so uh, i you know if i look at the program So all these things are there in MIT or IIT or wherever, right? So we are looking at the same programs and building our program. So that's an, I'm I'm hundred percent sure that uh, our programs are also good, right? Okay. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Because you are still new. Anything you want to clarify about down rules or basic uh, things? Yes, guys. Anything to clarify before go to the subject content? Uh, so one question now i am on the second semester now um, today we have uh, saturdays we have two lectures and sunday we have three isn't it or two yeah yeah for you guys it's two here and then uh, rm and uh, forensics on sunday give me a second ah huh? Yeah. So yes. Any other questions, Patrick? Your question is okay, right? I answered it. Yes. Right? Sir. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other? So yeah. If you can brief on the lecturing. Uh, hi, sir. This is me here. Uh, if you can brief on the lecturing, uh, the method. I mean, uh, with regard to our timetable, one falls on Saturday, the other one on Tuesday, five to seven. Oh, so I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This subject I'll come in a, in a, in a minute. Huh? Don't worry. Okay. Anything sure. else about other related things? Yeah, I hope that everything is fine. So, like I told you, I'll be sharing all the uh, details on to log into Coursera, enrollment key, Slack ID, sorry, Slack links, and everything. Yeah, so we'll do that. Okay. Good. Okay. So then uh, we'll jump into. Uh, The subject matter. So this subject is ISMS. 
information uh, security management systems, right? Uh, yeah, it's a mouthful. But in short, what we are trying to learn uh, is about standards. Right. So it's a very boring, you know, it's, when, when you listen to it, it seems like a very boring thing. But I'll tell you, it's not boring at all. And that's what you have to learn here, right? But always there should be outcome, right? If you do a course, you have to make sure you have a quite a good outcome out of it. If you don't uh, gain anything out of a course like this, there's no point at all. Okay? So that's how I believe it. I think you all have to set that mindset into that. You spend money, you put your time, the most important element of it. And if you don't, if you're not getting anything out of it, uh, okay, there's no value. So that's how I believe it. Just give me a second, there's a student call. Sorry about it. Still, people are trying to connect. All right, so I was saying, uh, so you should know exactly the outcome. So for me, like for this course, so we have to keep everything very simple. The outcome is guys uh, to become a consultant, all right? It's a big term, uh, but uh, anybody can become a consultant. Uh, so Patrick, what do you think? To become a consultant, how hard it is, what do you think? You said the uh, okay. that you want yeah. to become a cybersecurity consultant. So you might have an idea in your brain. No? What do you mean by a consultant? And uh, you might know how hard it is. So wh what do you take as a consultant? Uh, for my side, sir, I'm looking at the kind of, uh, it's not only the knowledge you get, but also the experience you um, uh, go through different uh, domain knowledge and also the um, content you are up to date. So if you carry all three of these you know of course i, I think you know, can become a, a consultant so now can anybody be a consultant of course this if you have these qualities knowledge experience the, and uh, yeah 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 the, the the key factor i see the, the passion mm. passion to do what so what what is the consultant's day job like you know the, the thing that that person should do Any idea? Solutions for uh, business problems. Uh, Is it only for business? Pro yeah, that's why it uh, changes from few other uh, titles. Like, okay, we have a coach. We have uh, mentors. Right? So we have coach, you have mentors, you have teachers, lecturers, and mentors, coach, uh, and then consultants. What are the differences? I become a Mulima lecturer, I teach again when a Samokad. Who's a lecturer? Lecture again and Ganang Ganamati post a cup, Termomati post a cup. Teacher is like at the school level. No, you build up uh, your life with teachers, isn't it? Lecture come in a value cat win in a hair, but it's all like academics. No, right? So, uh, when it comes to industry people, industry people hate academics. You guys hate me also, no? Are you? And anyway, normally it is the case. They think Not really. I, <laughs> <laughs> Even I have said that. When I'm in the industry, I say I don't say I'm a lecturer. I say I, you know, academics. But it is not the it's all contextual. In Sri Lanka, it is the case. Not 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 right now. Right now, I think I think the mindset is being changed. 
But if you go to Silicon Valley, it's completely other way around. Google cut ke duan ne akar mixa gaavat. If you have a problem, if you if you are doing your new company like Uber, they run to academics. Can you solve this problem for us? They really value and they are very synced up. But here we don't have that. But anyway, okay. So uh, lecturers are like basically people who try to you know explain things more. It doesn't matter. Like some people say they are theorists. Nah, me kaak nah. Like you know, teachers are mainly like you 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 are always guiding you know with uh, anyone who are the participant. Lecturers are more of uh, it's not two way mostly, but you know you deliver something, you try to teach something, you try to give the experience. It's mostly one way. and that's where you have to come to coaches right coach uh, coach uh, coaching is another process where it's more of uh, uh, combination of everything right combination of everything coaching uh, because to become a coach you have to have a lot of patience and you understand people from their into inside to outside right so i think coaching probably is the biggest uh, or the most difficult task but uh, Uh, that can be even the most uh, i would say uh, most fruitful because uh, i don't know whether you have read a book called trillion dollar coach trillion dollar coach right? so uh, the right coaches actually do earn a lot of money and from your side try to think uh, try to get a coach to your life now if, if you are good that's fine don't need coaches but if you are not good try always try to get a coach why not right so Pay something, you know. Say, say you want to learn a guitar, play a guitar. You might be doing it for ten years, still you are at the same place. But get a coach who can teach you. Within one hour, you can improve a lot. So why you why you why you are afraid to pay like ten thousand rupees? You have to do that. So coach is someone who is more connected to you uh, in a personal level, right? But of course, there are coaching sessions uh, where there are thousands of people. But still, uh, the coach should be able to connect with you personally. Like all the religious leaders, they do coach. Mentoring is different. Mentoring is one to one, of course. You can't do mentoring like in a bigger session, right? So mentoring is always like peer mentoring. I I don't say like you have to be very you know big, or you have to have huge years of experience to do a, a mentoring. You can mentor anyone, right? So yeah. So then come consultancy. Consultancy, yes. Uh, somebody said that uh, there should be a business problem, and consultants can give the solution yeah so it's very true uh, so consultants are people uh, who have experience i won't say like a coach where like life experience generalized experience rather consultants are more of very specific you know they have to be very specific as well because you don't have to go as a consultant and do coaching it's very different sometimes there are consultants who have all these skills but then and there when the requirement comes you can do that so like patrick said to become a consultant you have to be in good in uh, your knowledge uh, and you have to be updated and you have to have a passion of course to change people's lives including uh, like change organizational uh, behavior and lives of organization you have to assume the organization that you're going to help is kind of a entity where they have breathing thing so then you have to help that organization to move ahead go ahead and uh, try to do better in their whatever the aims if you want to earn more money you have to make sure that they will earn more money if they wanted to become a better you know societal impact so that whatever right so that's why you become a consultant so but having underpinnings of being a lecturer academic and a coach or a mentor or you know all these things would be really helpful for consultant but one thing of course consultant should like patrick said to have a very clear passion on uh, to help people if you're just uh, doing that for to earn the paycheck i think it won't help that's 100% right so the consultant the best, better consultants in the industry in whatever area in cyber security uh, networking machine learning or whatever technology development whatever management consultants they have to have the passion to help people right so it's not only the paycheck right so that is like overall base concepts any consultant here you want to add more things to our topic here right now anyone so when i look at the excel sheet that's not right Lot of consulting experience. Yeah, Ramji, uh, I think you have some experience on cloud. Yeah, in case of uh, let's say in a common term. Yeah. Um, as a consultant in an enterprise solution, 
uh, we have to identify what are the key points they have lack of that vulnerability in the, the, in this uh, particular cyber security case so yeah. whoever ha have the skill they have to up to date with that uh, current edge uh, technology that are available currently now and we need to match the solution with that uh, required customers yes thank you rohana i think you have a service delivery at ibm so you have i think those are experience on consultancy anything you want to add well uh, i think patrick and the other assistant have you know shared the most uh, important things uh, well actually i agree with them uh, however uh, we should have a passion as they said and it's challenging right now because the 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 it uh, in, 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 uh, environment is you know uh, expanding very drastically and the cloud is the next generation i mean it's it's starting now so cyber security is very important that knowledge is very important and uh, domain knowledge is the critical factor uh, when you when you want to become a good consultant i believe okay, what do you guys think about problem solving that's the fundamental level yeah 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 so now this is the thing i think very true what uh, rohan is saying is very true and patrick and others so you need to have the knowledge but i would say Uh, knowledge and experience right both uh, the passion and everything is attitude knowledge skills and attitude so rest is all attitude but at the same time we are understand uh, how good we are in solving problems so this is a very generic skill right but uh, we have to master it because every time somebody will call up a consultant right so everybody can be a consultant no that's you have to understand first not that very hard to become a consultant some people say no no you have to have 30 years of experience to know it's bullshit even you are a kid you can become a consultant that's what i'm saying so you will agree with me to some extent uh, during the lecture uh, what you need is a strategy smart strategy so then you can uh, call yourself as a consultant but the only thing is to become a better consultant pota tinna a good to great wage e wage you can start as a consultant at any point but really to engage with real life problems of people and companies you need to have a very good uh, uh, forte of skills and the portfolio of skills so one of the biggest or uh, prior, most priority skills that you should have in that list would be problem solving because any organization will come at you and say majan come here i have a problem can you consult us so then you have to understand the root cause problem that they are facing Not that every time people have need of consultants, no, because you have the domain knowledge in your organization. Say cloud, say blockchain, say software security, say it's a vulnerability analysis. You have the skills, and you can learn skills from YouTube. There are else you have to go for so YouTube. Be well, I'm only got three on these days. I don't think knowledge is the hardest thing that to, hardest thing to absorb. It's very easy. Skills bit harder, but it's I would say easier than like few years ago i i started studying it in 1998 uh, where i got a computer a real computer at my home 1998 long time back that's the day i started learning about it computer science and all that those days learning is quite difficult potak kat nai na beta right internet is there but very slow right but uh, then i started learning about it in 20 uh, 2000 at slit right uh, as the first batch and even those days we haven't had uh, internet slidey patan ga the internet na shit ticket right right so we got internet after 6 7 months so then we realized the internet is the thing google is the thing google the banana dawasara asta vistar ma kare thamai tibbe and we had yahoo of course and then we had another one can't remember asta la vista is the one right that we always search things but anyhow but now we just look right so very easy to get the skills there are so many platforms to get skills now you have to be smart of course you can work in the industry for 20 years but these skills that you got within the 28 prime time period you can get it within a one year and there are so many freelancer platforms uh, platforms you can work for free like open source platforms right there are projects everywhere when you look at here they are down under up everywhere you find a project so if somebody say majang i haven't got any experience you are very stupid I don't know where to get the experience. These guys say no experience in your CV. I'm really disappointed. You're stupid. Go and work for GitHub. You know there are so many open source projects where you can involve. 
cyber security, to networking, to Ansible, to whatever, Docker, whatever. And there are people who host these projects to just to give you the experience. And there are millions of Zoom sessions every day where people do things online. You can go and jump in and do with them, learn, you know, so I think skills is also not, not very hard. And these are some of the things I have seen one project which is done by Uber engineers. I, they were doing, you know, a session online, live session, where anybody can go and do coding. This is a kind of a demo project that they have done. So see, the sky is the limit here. Right. Attitude doors, if you have the right attitude, not that maker and the band is you have the right attitude. So getting your skills is fine. But what you should do is if you be, want to become a consultant, I think you have to know how to solve the real problem. We always solve something which is not real. Uh, right. So that's we are very famous. Oh, sorry, we are very proud of doing that. We are saying, okay, I solved the problem, but it's not the problem that you had to solve in your life and uh, your family in general and also everybody else. So there are some other things that you have to learn, like concepts you have to learn when you, become, when you want to become a consultant. So the first point is becoming a consultant is not that hard. You can do it in a very short time. And you all can become a consultant in a very short time interval. I would, uh, I would make sure that I will show the direction. Right? When I started in year 2004, soon after my graduation, the first job that I had was to interview a CEO and a CIO. Uh, no one cared about me. And I tried getting help from the, the peers in cybersecurity those days. No one helped me. And I uh, you know, found every other help from the internet. Right? So that's always I'm telling this story. So, but if you want, you can do that, right? Uh, so the thing is, you can earn it in a very learn it in a very short time. So I, if I learn as like soon after the graduation, if I learn the basic skills of consultancy, anybody can do that. But right now, it's after 15 years, you have everything, you know, clearly set up. Only thing is, you have to put it into a nice mind map in your brain. So truly speaking, you have to use a mind map uh, to understand what is in your brain and what are the skills in your brain. What are the knowledge that is in your brain? If you do that right, I'll you know, teach it every day. So I'm using these tools, tools like Notion. I don't know whether you have used it. You can build up your Notion toolkit uh, to map what is in your brain and you have to work deep into those things. As an example, uh, how many of you know about cognitive science here? If you never heard of it, uh, even though you are learning cybersecurity, if you want to become a consultant, you have to know about cognitive science. How many of you know, know about root cause analysis? Root cause analysis by learned by doctors, engineers, artists, lawyers, and consultants. Given a problem, you should be able to, you know, do the do the, you know, what you call as uh, breaking into smaller parts and, and identify the root. So likewise, there are a set of skills that you learn. So in this course, there are some things that you have to do, and that is that you have to uh, burn into your life some skills and some, of course, some habits. If you don't do that, you'll not become a consultant. I'm 100% sure of it. So I really want you all to do that. This all will come step by step. So I'm not going to talk about all these things today because there's a subject matter also uh, we had to work with. Give me a second. Right. Uh, so some of the habits, routines you have to. So as an example, you have to write things, you know, you have to write things and you have to uh, read things. OK. And then you have to discuss things. So likewise, there are several habits that you have to incorporate. So I want your, I would say, uh, commitment towards this if you really want to get this done. All right. So I'll give you guideline. Don't worry. So I told you a few two things now. In this course, we are going to learn about standards. I haven't talked anything about standards yet. And then I said, okay, outcome of this course to become a consultant. So if you can do that to some extent, not 100%, to some extent, I am successful. And also you will feel good about yourself that, uh, you know, I have done this course and I have, in the other day, I, I had become a consultant, right? But this is the thing. Uh, now, this standards thing is just example. Yeah, uh, you can just try out. Uh, but you can become a consultant of any field that you like to work with. 
you are into networking so you can become a network consultant you are into uh, software you know mainly uh, software development so you become a software security consultant so i would ask you to i would uh, you know i would like if it is basically some something in cyber security or related to cyber security but it's not a must but it's easier right it's easier in that way uh, or you can of course become a uh, consultant for standards yeah? information security standards uh, that's what i have i also have done uh, during the last several years so that's of course an area which, which is easier to jump in right so i'm not saying other fields are very difficult but uh, yeah but this one is can be much easier uh, yeah but there are some of course patterns habits that you have to inculcate right so are these two things clear to you guys now two things so we are going to learn standards and we can become we are going to become as consultants in different area but mainly i'm going to push you to become consultants uh, for standards information security standards there's a bucket of standards that you can work with and this is uh, hugely you know lucrative you know very very lucrative because people are paying a lot of money for standards millions of dollars every year right oh, sorry every year if you look at the whole industry billions of dollars but organizations itself they do millions of dollars pay millions of dollars for standard implementations it's a very lucrative field anyone here who have done iso 27000 iso 31000 pci dss itil or anything related let me check the excel sheet anyone into uh, grc uh udana have you uh, for peoples bank have you gone through any standard implementations yes uh, recently we have gone through the 31000 and 27001 standards for the peoples bank last year perfect how how easy was it how difficult was it ah uh, it's a very mess uh, uh, for uh, we think i think uh, we have worked for it uh, for at least five years to get that uh, certification all right iso <laughs> okay huge i have one question i'll ask i know you can't uh, give an exact answer because of ndas like normally a bank in sri lanka for a, for a year right you should probably talk with other peers of yours know how much they are paying yeah. standard implementation it's a rough figure uh, any yeah it's uh, in millions i can say yeah. <laughs> It can obviously go up and down depending on how, how deep. Yeah, are. yeah. But yeah, okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that I think others who have no idea, you might get a bit of idea. Okay. Say what we are involved in with here, right? Okay. So, any questions on what you are going to do? Any questions? It's very practical, right? Very practical. Very hands-on. and uh, when you get into that you will feel really comfortable and also the, the term that i'm looking for is confidence end of the day if you are with, if you become confidence uh, in this one i think that's the that's the game plan a lot of people are not still confident enough but if you become a consultant you can go and talk with anyone you can go and pitch anything you can go and do anything you can do and write anything and publish it so you get all those confidence in you i think that's uh, in worth of millions of dollars So if you are not none of those, I think end of the semester, uh, you like it or not, you'll become that because you to pass that you have to make sure that you become consultant and you show that you are a consultant in the final viva. Yeah, any questions before we jump into the next section? And every day, uh, these are class rules, right? We'll have a session where, like, for thirty minutes, uh, we are going to have. Uh, Uh, we are going to have a uh, kind of a open session where everybody has to switch on the cameras and we'll have a chat. So today I'm not going to do that because I don't know the shape of you, right? You may be in places where you can't switch on the cam, but next week onwards, make sure for like 30 minutes. I'll even give the time, like say, okay, we are 10:30, you know, 11 to 11:30, we'll do switch on the cams, right? So get ready and you know, you can do whatever, right? Yeah, that's one of the class rules, and uh, yeah. 
any other questions so give me like uh, two minutes meantime just think about the questions and just write down what you said very important write things down uh, you can use a journal uh, in a tool like evernote or one note or i don't know notion if not just use a notebook like this it's very important to take things down that's a very good habit so take two to three minutes to do that please i'll come back
All right, guys. Uh, anything to clarify? Can you hear me? I uh, guess. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Right. So, any question? No, right. So, okay, fine. So, I think you are clear about what we are doing and what is the outcome. Uh, everything that we do, the final exam and the CA continuous assessments are all based on this. I'll come to that. Uh, the next part is okay. What we are covering in this course module and how we are covering and uh, how we are evaluating. Right. Uh, initially, uh, we're going to start with the uh, introduction to why standards uh, and why it is important in general. At the same time, I'm trying to cover these three major aspects of information security called GRC, governance, risk, and compliance. Right. So these are very important, very high level concepts that we all have to learn. And even though we have the best network engineers, uh, security engineers, DevOps, uh, whatsoever, whoever, it will all fail if you don't do these three things right, governance, risk, and compliance. And these governance, risk, and compliance are very generic topics as well, which can be very important uh, in everyday life, right? In everyday life. Uh, so you all can work out your own life by using governance, risk, and compliance. So we'll see how the value of those three things. At the same time, we'll see how it can be applied to the modern day organization to uh, implement information security. Right. So you're going to learn uh, about standards as well as how the standards can help to implement this governance, risk, and compliance. So that we'll learn. And the second and third topics would be, of course, the second topic is the most largest topic, which is ISO 27000. We'll take this particular standard as the, the example to dive into information security standards. So it's a huge topic, ISO 27000, because there's no end. Even you'll uh, do it for a lifetime, there's so many other things to learn. Right, but we have to start from somewhere. But uh, by learning this first standard, ISO 27000, you will uh, get all the hardcore skills of uh, how to work on a compliance standard. So that is uh, very useful and tell you, uh, mind you, understand if you learn a standard uh, in a course outside uh, anywhere in the industry, you have to spend like 300,000, 400,000 rupees. But still you don't get the experience, but in this classroom we'll create, we'll create that in, uh, we create that experience among yourselves. We have 50 students. You can do so many crazy stuff, right? So ISO 27000 is probably one of the top standards right now. So you can go and check if you do a search in Glassdoor or wherever. You'll find in countries like US, you get paid a lot for the standard implementers, auditors, consultants, similar in Europe and also Australia, Singapore, Philippines, even in Sri Lanka. Right, uh, Sri Lanka, any, any field people are ahead to Karnan, you know, so we don't know how to exactly to find the value. But in good organization, blue chips, uh, they are paying a lot. That, of course, you know, when you say ISO 27,000, uh, there's ISO 9,000. The other days, uh, consultants are earning a lot, but even there are consultants who do it for 30,000 rupees. So we should not discuss about those cases where in Sri Lanka and maybe even in India, these are like not cases, right? But still, by learning this ISO 27000, uh, you will learn about even all the ISO standard processes and how to approach something like that and how you basically go through that cyclic process. And thereby you will learn so many other things that can be very alien to most of you. Right? So it's a, it's a discipline that is a very new discipline, but once you learn it, you will find it's very valuable for your everyday life. So that's we are going to start with ISO 27000. And then uh, we are going to learn ISO 31000, which is another great standard, which is not implementable in, in a sense like it's not, uh, uh, you don't get a certificate for it, but still we'll, we'll learn that. And then we are jumping into a completely different uh, kind of a discipline, which is uh, non-ISO standards like PCI DSS. Uh, PCI DSS is very important these days because everyone is interested on financial transactions. So PCI DSS is one of the top standards. And all the banks, all the financial institutes uh, have to abide with PCI DSS if they want to be in the business. So remember, these are having huge complications uh, in the industry. So if you are not into a standard, you can't run the business. Right? Without a license, you can't uh, uh, you can't uh, drive a vehicle. No, 
right without a proper uh, medical license you can't be a doctor medical doctor without a proper license from the uh, courts or the government you can't uh, do uh, legal matters so there are some uh, professions where you have to have licenses the standards are also same without some standards uh, organizations cannot uh, do business in, uh, in in anywhere in the world so this is a huge business itself and forget about the business part why we use standards why we are learning these standards like iso 27000 iso 31000 huge amount of standards pci dss even itil right uh, even 5s kaizen you know a lot why because standards anybody can say can can anybody say what is a standard can ban cover a standard that can mukadda kiyala what is that it's a quality. She can't, I can hear you. You're breaking up. Yeah, it's uh, me measuring the quality. Yeah, that's one aspect of some standard, right? But what I'm asking is, what is uh, generic, generally, what is a standard? It's a kind of a best practices and uh, regulations. Exactly, Ramji. That's what the answer that I'm looking for. It's a best okay. practice. It's a best practice. Nothing else. Uh, a compliable best practice. And sometimes it can be a rule as well. So best practices are what we have to learn right, in our lives. If you want to do things better, smarter, productive way, you have to always look at best practices. That's the re simple reason that you guys are reading books. No? Right? Even watching a movie, because you now when you watch a movie, you know you, you should not do that mistake. You know, you know, yeah, Patrick, you won't add anything. No, no, the, the ideal example you took. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So similarly, if you watch uh, Game of Thrones, still there's best practices to learn. No dragons here, but dragons are game. You know what I mean? Right, so you have to learn the best practice. Of course, it's fun, a lot of fun, but at the end of the day, you have to reflect on yourself, make Game of Thrones, Mukadda, right? So yeah. There's a lot of strategies you can learn. If you don't do that, you know, that's fine. Just pure fun, you can watch it. But still, you know, try to do that. Similarly, House of Cards. You can know how strategic you become, good or bad. Right? Similarly, you read books uh, to get the strategy. Now, Barack Obama, you read his new book, not the new book, but his uh, all famous book. Uh, you learn a lot of things how he became the president. Not because he's the best, no, but he, he knew what to do and what exactly to do. Similarly, there are Nelson Mandela to whoever the autobiographies or any other book, uh, because this that bugger had been doing that for almost 50 years, Obama. And uh, he wrote the book. Now, within uh, two hours, we can understand what he had done in this whole 50 hours, 50 years. So that's why I say reflect. Sorry, that's that's it be, you have to be smart. You become really smart you read the book and make your own notes only you reflect on it that's all you will understand otherwise you don't understand you have to reflect on it you have to read about the criticism again critiques like me there are film critiques why these buggers are important because they know exactly to extract the important points or the points that we have to let go yeah so hope it's clear so best practices are everywhere, guys, everywhere. Even your father, mother, you can understand how to live your life. You can look at their bests and, you know, even your life, you can look at the best practices. Why you are happy? Okay, what are the things that you did good in your life? If you're unhappy, what are the things that you... So this is very, very unique subject where it's really valued even in your life. So standards are like that. So uh, try to understand creating standards are very, very difficult. Now, the problem is you can create your own best practice. No, you can take your book and write uh, a checklist, 10, 10 things, you know, in there. Hurry. So you can write a checklist of 10 things, right? And then the, that becomes your best practice or standard to live your life. And who cares? I don't care. Patrick checklist, I don't care. And Lakma checklist, no one cares. That's the reality. It's okay. But now, Take your best practice and convert it to a standard. It's a huge process, a lengthy process. It takes long time. And there are organizations like IEEE, IAT, uh, IATA, like International Airline Authority, and Apilanka uh, with 
no even though no one cares right so there's a standard institute or a jam bottle wala gahala thiyenne uh, sls kila right so very recent i think they have doing a very good good one actually i share i think even today there's a session from sls a new one new standard implementation i can't remember the name of it i'll share it to you guys so they they, they are taking a kind of a very detailed process to come up with a standard iso organization they take a very uh, i would say difficult process they have something called working group research groups let me share my screen now now it's enough for you to see my face uh, let me share my screen yes uh, so now i believe that you guys can see my screen so if you go to iso organizations uh, you'll be amazed how many standards are there and uh, this particular organization is a billion dollar organization right uh, see uh, this is for travel right so what they do is uh, they talk to people who are doing uh, whatever they want to do, create a standard for a long time they they talk to the best people who have done it better and they extract their uh, best practices for a long time and they talk about it they discuss it they judge it and they criticize it and then take a long process and they create a standard out of it so when you want to create the best practice to the to a standard what you supposed to do is something called yeah anyone can anyone say how do you convert a best practice to a standard what is the secret here yes so as you can see there are millions of standards so these are the ones which are famous that's why they are no is quality management ape lanka na meka kala thiyenne so right forget about it but this is very important right this has all the basics if you wanted to develop quality in your organization 14000 environment this is this is very important and this is our pet standard the love of my life information security management iso 27000 Right. then of course uh, you have to go to under standards uh, and remember this is a uh, very costly affair right samadhan ne costly affair ke level this is also costly because every document you have to buy some documents are like one document sorry one document 60 dollars 70 dollars utar palas lakh is dark na ek standard ka sometimes you have to buy like say 20 standard document this is only the amount that you are paying for the documents right uh, yeah so and the cool thing i you will learn later everything i am not going to run this video now later on we'll do that in iso is a pretty amazing organization everything that they do they have references right? like researchers they have references so this is quality management and here if you try to demystify this uh, uh, this this statement not statement the, the, the phrase iso stand for information security so standard organization 9001 is the family and 2015 is the year of the version or the version actually right so and of course they do go with uh, hand in hand with uh, sdg uh, anyone living under the sun who doesn't know about sdg you have to be a bit ashamed of yourself so this is uh, the one that is actually been running for the last i don't know how many years with the united nations and there are 17 of them and there are huge number of projects running every day on this so if you can do something on this line i think you can get uh, international recognition you can buy uh, you can find a, sorry you can uh, get a nobel prize also and if you go to uh, this popular standards as you can see 9000 families for quality this is on right 45000 is for occupation health again another important one the covid time and see there are so many other references this is quite a great knowledge base everything even date and time they have iso standard guys medical devices and there are non iso's as well now if you get iata i think iata you know international airline some, something they have a plenty of standards yeah international air transport association they have their own standards right policy standards what so yeah this is i sometimes you have to pay millions of dollars to get one of those standards there are some technical and non technical standards this is like is a completely different uh, i would say a universe if you ne never been here right this is the first time that you guys are hearing this this is a different universe it's a parallel universe uh yeah so when i come to that yes uh, yeah i think that's very uh, the the secret is something along the right i'll come to that i just want to show few things and even ieee standards uh, there are a lot of technical people here uh, you know the famous ieee 802 point uh, can you tell me 
how that i triple e eight zero two point thing came into being you know i see triple e eight zero two point one two three four five six oh that's a lot so i would say yeah how many make are we so after see a decay equal how again wireless look at the phone me number yeah any idea these are also standards standards can it it's a lot any idea so before uh, 1980 mama pidich avurudde right like few few months before right so uh, there were not not a lot of standards for networking and security and uh, you know all these things and in 1980 somewhere in uh, europe in africa mang idan they got connected thousands of uh, engineers and uh, the month of february uh, they ratified the stand ratify kela vachane no ek ek vachana thoda thiyena me me ratified kela ratified okay now i'm asking the question again get a best practice ape tamuko ape metana inna kaga best practice ekak standard ekak karaganna one nan if you want to make it a standard what is the secret sauce yeah so i want i say like as an example ape tamuko avare aprami ayude aprami Aparami, you have a uh, best practice for something. Say, uh, you know, Aparami had worked for SLT for some time, telco telecommunication SLT. Now uh, she had understood some of the uh, uh, strategies, best practices for securing telco, the three G, four G, five G. Now she has a best practice. Now how can you make a standard, Aparami? Aparami had learned these things. Huh? I don't know who taught you that. Yes. Yeah, Aparami, how can you create? Uh, A best practice to a standard. What is the secret sauce? By doing the analysis. Ah uh, no. Yeah, you can try that, of course. But what is more important here? Getting what? Anyone else? Chatura. Chatura, what do you think? Chatura Madhushan. to that uh, like it to a standard level so that's what i idea i have okay okay good enough okay now the word here is called consensus so what is consensus then this is english lesson what is consensus gala ban google lege guys what is consensus general agreement exactly so you need to have the agreement that's the, the hardest thing to do now think about those stupid countries and apetta hema thamai palestine and israel these buggers are fighting for the gaza strife for almost how many years killing so many but they can't simply agree on a line single line and they are killing you know, killing spree these days also they are killing and how many tv shows created on issues with uh, gaza and you know Israel and Palestine. Uh, now there's a nice one called Tehran in Apple TV. If you watch it, it's, it's a good good one. And there was another one. I uh, can't remember. In Netflix also there's another one. And there's another series. It's good for the people who are earning, you know, uh, out of this uh, movie industry. But uh, you know, a lot of people people who are getting killed. I think it's not fun at all. Even Sri Lanka, we had a very similar situation. No? this this political buggers are fighting we they don't have a consensus agreement so remember getting into agreement is not that easy united nation how many like a same story how many years even 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 i was young too young i would say i, I was like curious why these buggers can't just come into one single agreement okay why do why do you have to kill yourselves but now i know even coming to agreement with your own self is difficult isn't it what do you think guys 
do you have agreement with your brain and your heart and your whatever the you have other things that you have are you in agreement with those three things man samahara mata kiyanna beha right so i think you understand as you know very grown up people uh, your brain and the heart and there's another thing we say are you in agreement rishmi what do you think obviously no sir because there are plenty of choices here exactly so it's very hard to come into agreement with this very hard right it happened all throughout the history of uh, human human uh, you know humanity and uh, in this universe so it's very difficult coming to agreement is very difficult i can get a lot of technical examples google you know companies like google they are really creative and they are very smart google when google came up with uh, the android operating system they knew for sure they couldn't release uh, android to the marketplace and to become the best uh, mobile operating system right because if any is coming from google anyway there will be people who hate it i know there can be sharukh khan there are people who loves sharukh khan at the same time there's another percentage who hate sharukh khan there are students here who hate me as well as who probably like me you can't solve the issue some people think i'm that this person should be loved by everyone no that will never happen so consensus is something very difficult to achieve right so you have to work really 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 hard even the same example that we took uh your own self uh, it's very hard to come into agreement the patra you know no so similarly what google did anyone knows what google did when they re- if they re- re- released uh, android as google's work surely there will be people who hate it microsoft had uh, done the stupid thing for a long time but now they are uh, facially intelligent they are doing in a different way you know what happened for android who who did release android do you think uh, android is google's product we know for sure like at the behind work is done by google but they created something called open handset alliance i don't know whether you are hearing for the first time but they created something called open handset alliance and that's the reason android is so popular right now because open handset alliance what they did even though you don't know it open handset alliance is a combination of all the vendors uh, researchers scientists uh, so if you look at the alliance all the who are you to uh, all these people are here right uh, to samsung to motorola to that's why everybody realized uh, okay this is one of the things that we had to do before this there you had this fancy nokia stuff and all that symbian and all that but never worked out you know who did the who did the stupid thing here when uh, and, uh, google created the handset alliance who didn't uh, take part of it take part of here you know the companies who didn't take part of here nokia Nokia so now then what you know what happened to Nokia right of course Microsoft and Apple they had their own ecosystems they are big companies but Nokia had uh, 50% of the gdp from uh, finland but Nokia happened to go into a state where they were losing everything but now again they are coming back not like earlier but Nokia those days everybody had a Nokia phone right even right now also those phones are really good better than 1000 miles better than apple phones but stay uh, what happened so they didn't uh, come into the agreement common agreement we are all the other buggers are here right so what our phone to t mobile to lg everybody is here so then it's very easy mobile operators and the handset manufacturers like dell to fujitsu and semiconductor companies like i think intel and all the buggers right uh, again the software companies uh, again ebay to everybody took part of it so this is where they build up the agreement so remember guys hardest thing to do in a standard is to come into the agreement i give example uh, why some of those best practices failed uh, you guys are very young i believe mage age ekena katta bodak adui meke but i think you have heard about uh, beta cum and falsicum are the days that you watch deck pieces but hari vachana mana matakena i call it as deck pieces for easy easy, easy english but uh, those are called cassettes right uh, you know so vhs 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 yes. exactly thank you vhs right so you have beta cum and fal Do you know? Do you know like which became very popular? Which was popular at least in Sri Lanka, but it's not only in Sri Pal. Lanka. Several other places. Yes, Jaliya. Well, yes, not beta. Beta was smaller, blah blah blah. But you know, but beta was the best version, not the pal. But this is the co- common belief system. Everybody thought the bigger one was better. Right? It's so stupid, no? Similarly, DVD came, and then those days there was another one called HD came. I can't remember exactly the technical terms, but uh, this HD, whatever the thing was, much much better than DVD. But uh, end of the day, maybe because it start with the D, I don't know. 
whatever stupid reason people believe that is the case and similarly like in sri lanka you know, a lot of people say rajapaksas are better i don't know right so i'm not, i'm also like I, i voted for them so no harm but still we don't know the common sense agreement maybe ranil vikram singh is a very bad uh, politician maybe he's not the case who knows we are not to discuss politics here similarly everybody hate donald trump but maybe he's the best guy in the whole the, you know western political system even for sri lanka i don't know so so this is the thing common sense is not the right thing but that's in play try to understand that's in play so we have to understand that uh, uh, we say the sad reality right so uh, some organizations do lot of uh, say i would say influencing towards this but remember somehow we are end up getting set of standards which are not the always the best practice but part of best practice which is agreed by a lot so that is the case so remember this knowledge is very important uh, so it's a standard is always a best practice which is commonly agreed by a lot of people to be best practice right so uh, standard creation process is a very long detailed one which we are not going through it but if you find this to be something very interesting while you are doing this course let me know i am in some organizations uh, in their working groups uh, where i can connect you guys also i'll do a, give a small assessment also during the sessions that uh, will help in good getting into uh, experience in good in consultancy because if you are involved with the standard creation process that's the probably the best so i'll give you the directions help Uh, at the moment, I'm in a set of working groups in Cloud Security Alliance. Uh, we are working on some standards, um, also helping them. So you also can take part of some international uh, events or international processes like that. So don't think I should always use this. No, no, no. You also can do. Uh, you involved with these processes, right? Okay. Uh, any questions up to this point? Yeah. Then we are going to the 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 habits and routines that you have to continue with. So almost we are coming to the last section, thirty minutes. Questions, guys? So we'll have a class in Friday also. I'll tell you what we do there. Uh, it's not mandatory you be there, but it's better like because uh, we'll do some practical things there as well, right? Uh, don't worry if you miss something, you know. So we'll have the recording for this one. Also, we'll have the recording. And some students have mentioned me. You ha you haven't got the credentials. Just wait for one or one or two days. We'll uh, try to clarify it. And like I told you, we'll have a Slack channel. I'll put all those links in the WhatsApp group. So because it's easier to have Slack channel uh, or such Slack team, I say. So then you can have different channels for all different lecturers. At least for cyber security, we'll do that. So it's much easier that way. I think most of you from from the industry, you know how to work with Slack, and how, you know how cool a tool is that. Okay, any questions? No. Okay. Good. Okay. There's a question in the chat. Yeah. So all the enrollment keys, everything I'll be sharing in the WhatsApp. Don't worry. There's nothing yet in the course. Okay, now come to the things that you have to do in the coursework. So of course we'll have lectures. You will basically learn things and you have to practice it. Now see, this is the one. This is the one that you have to be very careful of. Now there are a set of things that you have to do, like I told you. Some of them you have to do daily, some of them weekly, some of them uh, at your own time. I don't mind because it's up to you. Now uh, end of the day, right? So what should happen? The format of the class would be like this. So so next week I'll introduce you the standard. Then there are so many interesting things that you have to do. Meaning, as an example, there's something called audit. So, what you're supposed to do is, as an individual, as an individual, you can start becoming a consultant. So then, how do you become a consultant? Of course, you have a real client. Find a client. You can offer your service for free. Right. So what do you have to do now? You have to show that you are a consultant. Now comes the fancy part. Right, so if you want to have a be a consultant, you have a nice, smart, you know, ekati na kala pehito mo assume, right? So you have to have a, a, a business card, right? You have to have a business card. 
okay that i have discussed card and then uh, you need to have uh, your own portfolio okay this is the part that you have to start doing right now today how many of you have a uh, portfolio how many of you are hearing that word portfolio for the first time ramesh no elective modules all mandatory for the first year for cyber guys intentionally done okay guys tell me yes anybody here having a portfolio chalaka do you have a portfolio people who don't know what is a portfolio guys portfolio can be a book like this right where uh, you can probably send to someone or you can just keep it there a wedding set photo han gear pass they have your books no or you can have your portfolio in the facebook right or you can have your portfolio if you are artist or a kind of person who is doing uh, this sort of things you can have it in instagram uh, or if you are a person who like video based portfolios you can have it on tiktok or you can have it on a website right yeah so you can have it on a website so your blog can be your portfolio or and partly you can have it on a linkedin all right so there are few things that i really want you to do if you don't have it you have to start doing it now i'll provide you guideline if you want to but i'm not going to teach you how to write a blog that's so simple go and youtube it but next week you have to i'm going to share a whatsapp sorry uh, excel sheet you have to basically share all your portfolio links how many of you know about linktree so you can use linktree and from that's like your basic uh, uh, yeah basic uh, place where you can build up your portfolio from linktree to of course one should be for link in you know linkedin i don't have to give lot of guidance to do linkedin but uh, yes linkedin is one of the best places you can uh, find your portfolio so this is a undergrad students who just passed out last month It doesn't matter for the last 22 years probably at 22 23 19 plus something you've been doing a so few things right in your schools at your home whatever so you can have you can build a portfolio even you don't have work experience and then the cool thing is every day try to add something to your portfolio so you can have your blog which having a lot of information about yourself to showcase what you have and of course any other medium like youtube or whatsoever you can use i don't want i don't want to push you everyone to do youtube or tiktok or instagram no uh, there are a few things that i but really want you to do one of course is uh, your own blog right uh, cv is another one of course but cv is very static but we want something that is changing of course if you have a business by your own you can your site can be your portfolio so where you don't put your name in front but your name of the company in front that's doesn't matter for me whatever portfolio should be built but here there's a small difference because your name should be going out with the consultancy so you should have uh, your own blog as well with your name right chalaka javira right so you have to if you don't like your name lara idasa rukmini devi ne kal rukmini devi was a different name that she used no yage nama vena mokadda ka ya chalaka yes sir so you want to use a different name like chalaka you know jans or something you know, when you go to australia you always shorten your names no so there is uh, this friend of mine nimali something so he said names so you can do that it's up to you so you want to be international consultant you short your name put arno swasana or something that's okay it's up to you but you have to have that name right you're marketing your name as a consultant your brand everything is that okay so it's up to you you can say engineer something engineer uh, chatura madushan you know or software architect dilan or something you know it's up to you how do you how to define it right so but you have to do that so day by day you have to build it and then uh, whatever other mechanism uh, you can use so so yeah so that's number one to have that uh, portfolio so digital portfolio not a uh, like printed portfolio it's like old time so do that please right and then of course there are few other things you need to do your postings uh, a blog post uh, there are few uh, places that you can do that Uh, one is medium 
right? One is medium. So you all have to do this, right? So it's not uh, optional. I'll give you the frequency. Right? So uh, now, okay, can someone uh, switch on the mic so then we can have a discussion? Uh, Ravindra, are you okay to switch on the mic? Ravindra Jayasinghe? Yes, sir. Ravindra, where do you work? Uh, I work at Horizon, sir. Is it? Horizon. Horizon okay. campus. Okay, so you want to become a consultant in cyber? Is that your plan? Uh, yes, sir. Perfect. Now we can use uh, Medium. We can start writing a, a blog every say day or every. So I will give the frequency. So some of the things can okay, be sir. practical that we can decide. Yes. At least two posts a week should be mandatory. I'll tell you how to do this. So when you okay, put, sir. Uh, when you put a Medium post, uh, uh, Ravindra, you can uh, put it to your blog and put it LinkedIn as well. If you want, you can use uh, yes. places like uh, Facebook. It's up to you. Or you can create a page of your own. It's up to you. I'm not going to push because some of the time I don't want to push in a boundary where you feel a bit uncomfortable because you need your own yeah. time to do that. But these things, you can have your different name if you want. So Medium, even LinkedIn, uh, blog post. It's a normal, right? So <clears throat> that's yeah. it. So you're not, uh, you're not uh, passing any of your personal boundaries. But if I ask, push you to yeah. do Facebook, you know, maybe it's your personal space. I don't want uh, any of this to go to a personal space. Keep it personal, private. That's okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so that you had to do, and then of course, if you are interested, uh, you can build uh, something like a like a community among you uh, on Substack. Okay, Substack is okay, a sir. platform where I mean, maybe you have students at Horizon, or maybe you have yes. uh, yeah. So you can build up a newsletter that, that goes every week where you can talk about. It. So what should happen end of the semester? Uh, right, you get marks for all of these things. Right. So, in another semester, you can collect all those documents and you can, uh, we all can collectively publish a book. That's my part. So, you have to write, you can start very leisurely, very simply. But uh, at the end of the day, another month, you should have at least 10 good blog posts that you selected, mm -hmm. handpicked with your experience, right? Where you can post something. That's one of the outcomes. Yes. So, then you become an author of a book that you're going to publish. All right. Okay. We never, never thought of doing that no but we'll do it here yeah right that's one of the outcomes right so then you have your blog your medium and if you want to earn money out of it it's up to you so medium if you have a stripe account if people are reading your content and you have a lot of peers here now 50 people will read your content every every yeah. every week you know so you're going to do two blog posts we have 100 blog posts every week on some interesting topic you don't have to write, time to write uh, read everything but you know there are Cooler ways of doing this. You can use otter.ai where you can ask all the hundred posts to make it, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, audio, audio scripts. And we can use another machine learning algorithms to point out uh, what are the highlights of other people are highlighted. Get everything. So there are a lot of technology which you can use to make a consultant out of you in a very short time. You don't have to wait hundred years, okay. 100 months or hundred days to do that. Very short time interval you can do that. So much of newer technology. If you don't like to read, you can get your medium post and ask your Google uh, phone to read it or iPhone to read it. There's so much on Niva ways of doing learning things. So you used to use the technology. If you don't like to write, you can uh, talk to your phone and you know you can uh, you know uh, write it. So there are so many options. So there are a few of those uh, ground rules, class rules that you have to do. I'll give you a complete document and also uh, I'll give you uh, where you get marks as well, right? So as an example. Uh, at one point, uh, uh, say, I told you, like, say, as an example, now Rohana can start a consultancy for a client for free. You, give, you have to give a proposal. What standard, which standard you will select. So we'll do it very soon. Next week, I'll give you the guideline. Then it's for free. No, they will surely get it. Because I've done this exercise last year also. It went really well. Uh, only thing is uh, some of them just came up with a simple report. But uh, you can go deep. One student actually, not one, few students actually, implemented uh, the standard uh, in these organizations as well. So it's up to you to select the standard. It shouldn't be always ISO 27000, whatever uh, useful for them. And uh, if you find a good project, like a bigger project, uh, I, I will allow even to two to three members to jump in and do that. But it should be something uh, conveniently large. Otherwise, there's no point. And then, of course, uh, say uh, we'll have sessions where, like, uh, as an example, say Rona come up with, came up with a a nice proposal and uh, we'll have a session to audit it so then we can have smaller sessions in breakout rooms and audit so uh, they have to ask questions so there you get the real uh, you know uh, 
uh, real uh, realistic experience. And then of course uh, we had to go as auditors, consultants. Now we learn this. Don't worry. ISO 27000. So we are going to do internal reviews. So then we will we'll try to demonstrate those things as well. So yeah, real good trainings in Europe. I have seen these things happening. So we'll try our best to uh, you know simulate these things and think that that will give the real life experience. So we can't do all these things, but if you really help me on uh, this particular thing, I'll also be able to, uh, you know, to cover all these things, right? So otherwise, uh, if you keep like doing a very, I would say, more moderate task, you know, mediocre task, uh, I think uh, the less that we can do. But if you all help in doing this, it's be much easier. But there are the guidelines for very clearly. So then you can uh, define your time of that every week you have all these tasks. Right. So it's basically we have only two hours in Saturday. So I'll put the guideline what we do and what we have to do during the week. So then you can, uh, because there are so many other things that you do, other classes, plus plus, uh, and then you have own uh, office work, your family. So define whatever you can do and then do it. Uh, if you have many issues, I can, we can discuss as well. But I have done this before. So I know exactly the time allocation that you have to do. Uh, so it won't be a big deal. Can you still hear me? Because there was a power cut. Yes, sir. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we are at the uh, last 10 minutes. <clears throat> Any questions? So hope it's clear. So assessment is that, guys. So I will help you to do the assessment. So it's a real-time consultancy. So you can't simply just go and ask the client to do your project. They will never give it. So you have to come up with uh, your own portfolio, you build your profile, and then you can select a, a, a client. Uh, that's always you can go for imaginary clients, but I would say not to do that because you uh, there's very less that you're going to learn in that way, right? So obviously you can uh, you know, use your connections. These are the places where you get to use your connections. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your everyone, and then do a good job and get a reference also. So that's plus plus for you in your CV. And uh, friends can help friends now say. Uh, of course, they are, you have to sign NDAs. That's all practical, right? So if you want to do consult, in 2004, right, the next year I did CISSB, even if I, before I do CISSB, I did a small consultancy. And I was also afraid, uh, you know, uh, even, to, even to talk to someone, but I did it. Right? So that's why I'm here and I can confidently talk about these things. Not because I'm the best, but I want to be the best, but I'm not the best, but still I, I'm doing those things. Why? Because I have this thing called the one uh, you know thing that normally is hard to come by, it's a confidence. So you have to make sure that your confidence, you are stupidly confident in the beginning, but at one level you become smartly confident. Uh, that is, that'd be enough to work in the industry. Okay, questions? So the blog post and medium article seems to be in a particular topic, or it can be in all the topics you have in Any topic that you want. So, but uh, uh, like every day that you're learning a new one and you're a client, uh, when you are focused, then you can write things about specific topics. Okay. Right. And don't worry, like, you know, uh, there's this book called Show Your Work. Uh, don't worry to share things, guys. People always think people will laugh at me. Who cares? So there'll be one person in the world that will be valued out of your publication or the content that you're going to say. So just target for that one person. That'd be enough. Forget about the rest of the 7.25 billion minus one. Forget about them. Start doing for them. At least these people who are in this classroom can be valued at whatever you create, the blog or the YouTube or the video, or whatever. Right? So you have to start doing it. Any more questions? Any more questions? All good. Maybe you are a bit confused. That's okay. Confusion is good. So the whole idea is you start with confusion, 
uh, in the start of the class, you'll end the semester with clarity. So confusion is not a bad thing. Assuming that you will end with clarity. So keep it as a motivation. May I come on you with that? I'm confused. That's good. So every bit of the time that you are putting into the subject, uh, try to find the clarity. Okay, guys, any questions? It seems like no questions. So just for information that the, can we get the enrollment key? Yeah, yeah, yeah Sanjeev, I will uh, give all that in the WhatsApp uh, in, the, okay. in the day. Okay. We'll be adding new content to the course as mentioned in the interview. Uh, I didn't get that, uh, Ramesh. Are you mentioning? Ah, uh, okay, yes, yes, yes. So ML Ops and DevSec, yeah, we'll do that. So we have a course called Emerging Topics. So that course is creative, uh, created for that purpose. Whatever the new things that will come up, we'll do it in the uh, ETCS module. And this time also we are doing ETCS on Sunday evening, six to eight. You guys are completely uh, free to come to those sessions. I will share those uh, links. So we do talk about a lot of new things. Uh, that's a uh, both semester subject, but still you guys are open to come because when you're doing that in another two years time, we are talking about completely something different. So right now we are going to talk about DevSecOps and many other topics, even blockchain, solidity, and uh, cyber criminals, and, and on and on. Yeah. All good then? OK. So I think uh, you guys have session at 12.30 also, some of you. So, so I will stop the session now. I'm going to stop the recording now.